your seats, people. Just going to move the furniture around. I like doing that at home. There we go. Bit of space. Is everyone feeling Christmassy this morning? Yeah. It's a week to go. And part of Christmas, there's lots of tradition around Christmas, isn't there? And in your own families, you probably have many traditions. At the start of December, one of our traditions is who can have the first mince pie? And so I've had my first mince pie today. <laughs> Uncle Dan won that one this year. It's the pumpkin spice latte. I know Susie's up there for one of those. It's all about tradition. Maybe it's building the gingerbread house with your family. I know Lisa does that. There's lots of tradition, the turkey roast, the presents. But there's one tradition that entered our house about four years ago. And to be honest now, are we majority adults in the room? Yes. This tradition is brilliant for the kids, but not so much for the adults. And it's called Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> Now, Elf on the Shelf, we have one in our house, and our children named this one Chucky many years ago, <laughs> which is quite strange, but it's a very naughty elf, and it turns up and does all sorts of mayhem. But the trouble is, you get, after a busy day of work, you get into bed, and you're like, ah, relax. And then suddenly, Dan says to me, oh no, the elf. <laughs> we need to make sure that the elf has made his way to a new spot. So there we go, downstairs, and have to set up the elf. But then you get quite into it, don't you? <laughs> so the other night, I watched the elf, if there's any young people in here, get into the celebrations box and eat loads of the celebrations, smother it all over his face, cover himself in the wrappers, ready for this morning of when the kids are like, yeah, there's the elf. <laughs> but elf on the shelf. So if parents, you've got younger ones and you haven't started it yet, don't. <laughs> don't. If you want an easy life, just don't. But in the tradition of Christmas, we are buying gifts at the moment, aren't we? Who's done some of the Christmas shopping now? Yeah. Brilliant. Who's going to leave it to Christmas Eve? Yeah. Anyone? Oh, it's Johnny Steele. I knew I'd get a Johnny Steele there. But it's all about getting the perfect gift, isn't it? And some people are so easy to buy for. Matt Beals, socks and pants. Sorted. <laughs> Pastor Barry, if you've not bought for him yet, strawberry creams and champagne. Get in there. But some people are easy to buy for, and some people, it's hard, isn't it? But when you have that moment, you're either on Amazon, because we've all been on Amazon, or you go into the shop, and you see the perfect gift. It's like a moment, isn't it? It's almost like the heavens rejoice. You're like, yes, my mum's going to love that gift. I'm going to get it, because there's something about giving a tailor-made gift yeah. to people that you know on Christmas Day or on Boxing Day when you see them, you're watching them open it because there's anticipation. They are going to love what's inside that gift, particularly the socks and pants at Christmas. But my message today is all about the best gift you can ever receive. The most perfect tailor-made gift for each and every one of us is God's gift to us, his son Jesus. And I want to share about this gift today, and I feel so passionate about the gift of Jesus because it's why we celebrate Christmas. It's the answer to every need in our lives is found in Jesus. He is the hope of the world. And if you haven't discovered him yet, I want to encourage you this morning that he's the best gift you will ever receive and the best gift you will ever open. Your life will only get better and better, and your eternity is secured when you say yes to Jesus so we're going to discover through this message the greatest gift of all. So we've got to do a little bit of Bible history this morning. You know I like my Bible history. But we're going to go back to a time of 700 years before Jesus is born. And at this time in Israel, they are going through a horrendous time. They're under attack by the Assyrians. It is a dark, awful time. And people need hope. Perhaps it's a bit like today. People need hope. And in this time, the prophet Isaiah gives a prophecy that would change people's minds and hearts, that hope would be on the horizon. And it's a wonderful prophecy because it wasn't just for the people then, it's for us today. And this prophecy remains true for everybody living in 2023. And I want to read it to you in Isaiah 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I have some feedback here. Thank you. But for unto, that's not in the verse. That was just the feedback on the microphone. But yeah, there we go. But yeah, for unto us a child is born. 
And this is the greatest message of hope in this prophecy here. Because it was telling the people that it won't always be like this. Because there is going to be one who comes, who is going to be the saviour of the world, who will change everything. Because Jesus brings about change, everything. And I want to look at the words in this verse, so perhaps we can have it up from the beginning. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government will be on his shoulders. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He rules from heaven on earth with his kingdom. And he shall be called Wonderful. I want to remind you this morning of the wonder of God. Can we take a moment over this Christmas period and look at the awe of God and the wonder of who God is? His wonder to perform miracles of salvation, of forgiveness, of giving us his son. We serve a wonderful God and he deserves the name wonderful. He's wonderful above our beyond our ability and our human thinking. He goes beyond what we can comprehend. Sometimes we can't fathom God out, can we, in our minds? Because he's so much greater and so much more wonderful. But he is our wonderful God. He is our counsellor. God is the most amazing counsellor. And he counsels you with wisdom and with encouragement, with heaven. He counsels you with the Holy Spirit. He is your mighty counsellor. Many people go to counsellors and that's all great. But you'll never get a counsellor like God who counsels you with comfort and encouragement. He is a wonderful counsellor. He is mighty God. Mighty God. Jesus is the King of Israel and the Lord of Lords. There is no name higher than the name of Jesus, the Jesus that is given to us. He is the everlasting father. When you think of your father, maybe some of us had bad experience of our fathers. Maybe some of us had brilliant experience of our fathers. But God is a father who will never, ever let you down. He's an everlasting father. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he comes with his compassion and his love and his protection. It was love that the father had that would send the son Jesus to make a way for us. And he is the prince of peace. We talked about peace already this morning. That through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and us coming into relationship with God, we can have complete peace. You know, the world has a version of peace. Peace is all quiet and everything's done for Christmas and the presents are wrapped. And you're sitting down and the turkey's in the oven and there's a lull of peace. But Jesus gives us peace, not as the world gives us. Jesus gives us peace in the middle of storms, in the middle of hardship. Jesus gives us peace when it looks terrible in the natural, but we know supernaturally that he's the prince of peace. And you have that knowing of peace that comes into your heart when your relationship with Jesus, that do you know what? It's going to all be okay and it'll work out because Jesus is on our side. So God would send a gift for all. Isaiah prophesied, for unto us a son is given. Nobody is excluded from this gift. Everybody can have this gift. And what I love is that God chose to send his son to come to earth, to have flesh on, to be purely God and purely man, all in one. And he came to make a way from us, for us because sin separates us from relationship with God. And whether we know it or not, we have a sin issue and a sin problem. And Jesus came to say, I will put flesh on. I will be born of a Virgin Mary. I will go and I will stand in the gap. I will go to the cross of the most horrific of deaths, but I will stretch out my arms so that by my blood that is shed, I will make a way for people to have relationship with God. It's the greatest gift we will ever receive because we can't save ourselves. We need a saviour. And whether we think it or not today, I want to tell you Jesus has come to save you and to set you free. And as we go on this journey through the preach, you will see what is available to us when we just say yes to Jesus and open the gift of Jesus. Amen. So throughout the Bible, there are many prophecies about the coming of Jesus, all the way from Genesis, all the way through. There are so many prophecies. And when you start to study this, it's quite exciting, really, because you can see how all these prophecies are, some of them are so obscure, but they came to pass when Jesus was born. And they're amazing. And how I always think about God orchestrates everything and how he aligns everything. So just at the right time that Mary and Joseph would fall in love. And just at the right time, Caesar Augustus would say, we've got to put census out. So you have to all return to your hometown. So literally, I can find out who you are so I can tax you. That was the reason behind it all. And so Mary and Joseph would travel, travel from Nazareth 80 miles to Bethlehem to the place that is prophesied hundreds and hundreds of years before that Jesus would be born. 
that's not part of the preach. That's, that's, that's just happened there. There we go. Holy Spirit, even the trees are anointed, and the power of the Holy Spirit are falling down this morning in the church. But all these prophecies line up. The prophecies are about a virgin birth. They're about Jesus would declare himself the son of God. All these prophecies all the way through the Bible. And then there is a 400-year gap from Malachi in the Old Testament to the New Testament of Matthew. There's like silence. We don't have any record of what God has said. But then there is an announcement from heaven. Then Mary gets an angel turn up who says, you are going to have Jesus. You're going to be bear the son of God. And this happens. So imagine the anticipation from a prophecy 700 years ago that unto us a child is born. Do you think people were looking for it generationally? When will this child be born? When will this baby come? When will this savior come? Did they even know what it meant? Probably not. But there was a time when the birth would come. There's anticipation for the birth. And you know in the natural, it's like when there's a birth announcement. Like even before the baby is here, we are announcing that we are with child. You know, often in church, we get a couple up. We've got some news to share, and you can see they're really beaming and smiling. They're pregnant. They've got their scan picture. We're excited. We go all out for birth announcements, don't we? There is the gender reveal parties. When they get smoke that goes pink or blue, where balloons pop. And then when the baby is here, there is announcement. When they were born, what time they were born, the weight, what gender they are, what name, how was the birth. We go through the whole announcement of the birth because it's exciting because it's anticipation of what we see on the inside of the pregnant woman is then given into this baby. And so birth announcements are important. But for our Jesus, there wouldn't be a royal birth announcement from a palace. There would not be kings that would come and announce this new king that would come. But the announcement was made in such a way that God would show the all-inclusiveness of his gift, Jesus. And I just love this when you read this in the word. It's that whole revelation, isn't it? When you read the word of God, time after time, he reveals more to you because it's a living word. And when we read the birth announcement, as I've studied it for this preach, I have so felt God wants you to know this morning that he includes you. That Jesus was a gift for all. And whether you receive him or not, he is available for you. But you've got to accept the gift and then you have to open up the gift by opening up your heart unto him. And so the birth announcement of Jesus, how did it come about? Well, I want to tell you who it came to first. It came to the most unlikely of people. It came to a bunch of shepherds who were out working in the field. And to give you history of the shepherds, at this time, shepherds' job was to look after the lambs and look after the sheep. And the lambs that would be born would be the lambs that would be sacrificed in the temple for the atonement of sin. That's how they used to get away with sin in that, got away with it, but atone for their sin, (laughs) get away with it. Different message, but to atone, atone for their sins, they would have to have spotless lambs without any blemish, without any cuts on their feet or their legs. They'd have to be the absolute perfect lamb. And the lambs would be sacrificed in the place for their sins to be atoned so that they could then get away with it because their sins were atoned for. And these shepherds, their job would be caring for these sheep and these lambs. It would be their whole business to make sure no predators would come and take them. They would have to feed them and water them, take them to good pastures. And they cared for them at night. And shepherds would literally watch over the sheep at night. They would make sure they're secure and safe because who knows that there would be predators that would come and steal them out of the sheepfold. And so they had a really, really important job. And they raised these temple lambs. And that is very significant in our story, as you will see as we carry on later. But the truth be told... To the majority of people in that day and age, the shepherds were the outcasts. Nobody liked them. Everyone pushed them aside. They were uneducated. They probably were a bit smelly, if we're honest. But particularly the religious leaders of the time, they had no time for the shepherds. They were the ones, they would call them thieves. They would say that your testament does not stand up in court. They couldn't speak in behalf of court because they were just thieves. They were the outsiders. They're the ones that looked after the sheep. They're in the field. They were unloved and unwanted on the outskirts of society. They were not included in the community at the time. And this is so significant because what our God does is he shows up to the most unlikely of people with the birth announcement. 
Many of us, when we've had our own children or we know people have had children, you would not go to some stranger on the street and say, could you just announce to all my family and friends that I've had my child? You wouldn't do that. But what God does is in his kingdom, it's always upside down, isn't it? It's always different, but he's showing the inclusiveness of his gift. It was for all. It was for kings and queens, and it was for people that had no education and for those in the, in the field. So imagine one ordinary night. You've got these ordinary guys. They've locked up the sheep for the night. There's probably a bit of banter going on. They're probably just, you know, having a bit of fun out in the field. And then all of a sudden, this happens in Luke 2, verses 8 to 14. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So firstly, you're an ordinary shepherd doing your ordinary job and the whole of heaven opens up and a bright light shines and an angel speaks to you. Good tidings, I bring. You know, it's like Christ is born. Oh my goodness, you are going to be scared, aren't you? But the angel says, don't be afraid. Because exactly as Pastor Barry prayed earlier, because we don't have to have fear when Jesus shows up. You see, when Jesus shows up, we don't have to be fearful. We just have to put our faith and our trust in him because he's the lover of our soul and he's come to set us free. So instantly, I imagine them all like, okay, don't be afraid. And then they're like, not afraid. But really, they are afraid because this was an amazing thing. And then the, it's the whole thing of whole of heaven rejoices. You see, I think in heaven, they were anticipating and waiting of when Jesus would be born. Because they knew what was going to happen. He was going to come and pay for the sins of the world. He was going to come and bring redemption to people to have relationship with God. And so then there's this joy erupts and the whole of heaven rejoices. Light is shone everywhere. And then the angels in unison are holy is the Lord. It was the most magnificent of times. And God gave that message to the outcasts, the unloved of society. Not the religious people in the temple. We are holy. We will receive this king. No, to those who are on the outskirts. And I want to say to you this morning that Jesus has come for all men, all of us. And all we have to do is accept this perfect gift that is tailor-made for each of us. You know, maybe in life that you've been stung by the pain of rejection. Maybe you've gone through stuff where you have felt unloved and you have felt on the outside and you've not been included and you've not felt good enough. Maybe you've had that in relationships in family, in a marriage. You've experienced that. But I come today with good news to say Jesus chooses you. He loves you. He says, I want you in the middle. I want you right in the heart of things. I've got a place for you at the table that I call you my children. And just as with the shepherds, there was an invitation to come as they were. There'd been a, a day's work. No deodorant back then, guys. They're probably a bit smelly. They probably didn't look the best. They're probably covered in the dirt of the field. And yet the invitation from the angel was, go and find this Jesus. Go and find this child that's been given for all. And you'll find him in swaddling cloths, in a manger. He came for all. I love the fact of all inclusiveness because it's so important. And in life today, sometimes we can feel so on the outskirts. But Jesus called us right into the heart. And part of my job, I work for an events company in London, and they do lots of music shows and festivals, and it's a brilliant company to work for. And part of the company is a lot of these um, events they have are with really top DJs or acts, you know, and people pay a lot of money to get tickets for the shows, and you get like an ordinary standard ticket, you've got your backstage ticket, and you've got your VIP ticket. But what the company does, the bosses have set up this scheme because they want their company to be available for all people. And it's amazing their heart behind it. So what they say, if there are people that really want to come to one of these shows and see their most famous artist or band play, 
we have already got tickets that we've put aside ready for these people. And what they do is they have to email into an inbox that I look after. And they, a lot of their stories are quite heartbreaking. That some people are like, this is my best artist ever. I cannot wait to see this artist. Is there any way that I could have a ticket? But at the moment, I'm going through a really hard time. I've lost my job because of X, Y, and Z. Is there any way? And already, the tickets have been put aside. And then I get to put them, and it's such a privilege, on the guest list. But my boss says, don't put them as standard. Don't put them as backstage, but put them as VIP. And they get the full treatment. <laughs> and the reason that that can happen is because the bosses have already paid the price. They've already made a way. Just come and enjoy the show. And these people are then blown away by the fact, I get to enjoy all of this and all the extras, and I'd never get to experience this because I haven't got the funds to get on that guest list. But the way has already been made. And I want to say to you, Jesus has already paid the price for you. He's already made a way for you. He's already secured eternity for you. You know, often people say hell is where bad people go. No, hell is not where bad people go. Hell is where people go to pay for their own sins because they haven't accepted Jesus to pay them for them. And so actually Jesus said, I've made a way for you. And all we have to do is believe in our hearts and confess with our tongues that Jesus is the Son of God. And then we go on this amazing roller coaster adventure of life with Jesus right in the center that changes our lives forever. Jesus has already paid the price for you. But have you accepted the gift? So then back to our shepherds. So they got this big announcement from heaven. They're probably shocked and like, what are we going to do? But I love their response, which is found in Luke 2, verses 15 to 16. So it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let's now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. So with haste, let's go. Let's go and find this Jesus. Heaven has made this announcement to us, and we are called to go and find this Jesus. But we have to skip back to verse 12 to find out how they would know that they'd found the right baby. Where did they know where to go? You see, the kings were following the star, but they, they didn't know. Bethlehem was probably a town. It probably had quite a few houses in it. Where, where was the baby? Going knocking on the doors. Hello, is the baby here? But they had to go and find the stable. They had to go and find this God child. And the reason that, that they would know that they had found him is found in verse 12 of Luke 2. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And this is so significant in our story. Because swaddling cloths were made for binding wounds or wrapping the dead. But what the shepherds would do is they had to look after the lambs that would be going to the temple for sacrifice. And in order for the lambs to be sacrificed, as I said earlier, they had to have no blemish, no cuts, no thorns, no marks on their bodies. So what the shepherds would do is they would bind the legs of the lambs with swaddling cloth. They would bind them up so that their feet could touch the floor and they were not touching anything that was unclean because they had to be spotless and clean. So these swaddling cloths that wrapped up the lambs, when they went to that manger and they looked and they saw Jesus wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger, they realized that this was the Lamb of God that this was the one that would come and save the world from its sin. This is the one that would come and reconcile man to God. And their hearts must have leapt. And what I love is that these uneducated outsiders that the religious people said, we can't trust them because they're liars and they're thieves, were the ones who came with the greatest message of all to say that the Lamb of God is here to take away the sin of the world. And then the shepherds did what only they could do. They shared the story. They went about as saying, I've got to tell you what's happened. Heaven opened up, light everywhere. An angel came and spoke. Heaven rejoiced and we've come and we've seen this baby lying in a manger in Luke 2 verse 17. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. People marvel. I love that word. Can we marvel at what God has done in our lives? Can we marvel at what God is going to do? 
in our lives? Can we marvel about this child that were given to us, who would then grow and at the age of 33 would lie, stand on a cross with his arms stretched out and endure the most cru- horrible crucifixion and pain and whipping to die for my sin and your sin? Can we marvel at that this Christmas? That he made a way that we could be reconciled to God. And it doesn't just stop there. You don't just say, I'm accepting the gift of Jesus and that's it. I know I've got a pass to heaven. Let's just get on with it. But you know, when you open up your heart to Jesus, you open up your life to go on the most amazing adventure possible. And I want to show you something this morning. I'll I'll share with you something this morning. The power of testimony. We saw some testimonies on the screen this morning. But the power of testimony and the power of prophecy. Because in my life, I've seen so much of the goodness of God. And it moves me. Because when you go on that adventure with Jesus, you see great things. I've gone through hard times and I've gone through good times. But I've seen the faithfulness of my God. And I know so many people here as well have seen that. When I look back over church over the years, I know I look here and I see people whose bodies have been healed by Jesus. I see babies who have been born when people were told you can't have a child. And then you see the baby and you see that mother hold the baby in her arms. I have seen the goodness of God when people have come into church and they are broken. And over a process of time, Jesus does what only he can do. And he transforms lives and he makes people whole again. I've seen people go through a horrible time in marriage and then have come out the other side stronger than ever before because of Jesus. I've seen people who've gone through horrendous times of addiction and have come out the other side and are completely clean and set free because of the power of Jesus. I've seen broken lives restored. I've seen minds that have been so confused and so uncertain and so bound be completely free because of Jesus. You see, that's the testimony of my Jesus. I've seen whole families transformed that when the grandfather got saved, it went down to the son and then the son's children. And I've seen generations of people over my life come into relationship with Jesus. And he changes everything because he breaks every chain and he heals every heart. And he puts us on a journey of going from glory to glory with him. I want to encourage you, if you've never opened the gift of Jesus, give it a try. Give it a try because it only gets better. And as we go through stuff in life, it's not like you get this sudden relationship with Jesus and everything is brilliant. And we're like, yes, you go through some hard times, but I'd rather go through some hard times with Jesus on my side than on my own. I've seen prophecies fulfilled. So many prophecies over this church. So many prophecies over people's lives in this church. I've seen so many things happen. You know, you know when we do dedications here on babies and we have prophetic word or we pray for a couple who've got married. You see the outworking of that, that builds your faith in God because you see it happening. I've seen so much of that. But what I'm looking forward to is what's he going to do in 2024, church? What's he going to do for us as a church? What's he going to do in your family this year when you put your hope and trust in Jesus? Because Jesus changes everything. And we can be excited about that this morning. Jesus is my wonderful counsellor. He is my mighty God. He's my everlasting father. He's my prince of peace. He's all those things to me. But what was prophesied thousands of years ago is living in my heart today and living in your heart today. And if you haven't invited him in yet, today is your opportunity to say yes to Jesus. I'd like to remind you of one of the most famous verses in the Bible. John 3.16, but it coincides with John 3.17, as Pastor Barry always tells us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. You see, it's the greatest gift of all that Jesus came not to come and tell us all off. He came to rescue us. It's on the biggest rescue mission. You know, if you went out on a boat today and your boat sunk and you're in the middle of the sea, you would want the lifeguards to turn up to rescue you. And we don't even realize that we need a savior. People are getting on with their life and thinking this is fine. But we need Jesus to come and transform our lives. We need to have that relationship with Jesus so our eternity is secure. And we know that we will spend eternity in heaven with him. He paid the price already. But have you accepted the gift? Will you say yes to the greatest gift of all? You say, yeah, I want to open up that gift of Jesus. 
And I wonder if I could have keyboard player, that would be brilliant. But oh, I want to end this message today with an opportunity for you to say yes. I'm sure there's people across this house today that have never said yes to Jesus. And so I want to do that. But I also want to pray for those who've said yes. And perhaps on your journey, disappointment has set in. Or something has made you think, yeah, I've had the gift of Jesus. But to be honest, it's just on the shelf over there. And I never really enter into that relationship with him. I want to give you an opportunity to come back. Because Jesus' arms are stretched out for you. That all would come. You see, Jesus loves all. He loves the influencers. And he loves those who have no influence. He loves kings and queens loves down and outs. He loves those people who people don't even know the name of. He knows their names. He loves everyone from all spheres of life. And he has this gift. He says, come and receive this gift. Because when you do, the possibilities are endless when you come into relationship with Jesus. And I believe this morning there's so many people that have wrestled with this over a period of time, maybe this year. Do I say yes? Do I not? Do I go for it? Do I accept Jesus? I don't really understand it all. But you don't have to understand it all. The shepherds didn't understand it all. They just got a message from heaven. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is here. The spotless lamb has been born and you get the opportunity to come and worship him. So you don't have to understand it all. You just have to say yes in your heart. And he will help you understand it all. The greatest thing you need to know is that love sent Jesus. That Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us. He came and endured the cross to make it right for us. He's our saviour. And so I'd love to ask you to stand this morning. I'd love to pray with you. It's a tailor-made gift for each and every one of us. And all we have to do is say yes. So perhaps we could shut our eyes so that we give everybody a bit of privacy this morning. Is there anybody here this morning who wants to say yes to Jesus? You've never stepped into relationship with him. You've never accepted this offer of this free gift of salvation. If that's you this morning, just wave at me. Just show me that you're responding. This is your moment. Don't let it pass you by. Is there anyone that would say yes? want to step in this morning. Let me see your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's people responding, so we're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray a prayer that would just say that we're asking Jesus into our hearts. So if I say a line and you say a line, that would be brilliant. Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus paid the price for my sin. I acknowledge, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. And I choose to walk in relationship with you. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you for taking me on this journey of a new life. I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, Welcome to the family. Heaven rejoices. Even if you didn't put your hand up and you've prayed it in here, heaven rejoices that your salvation is sealed today, that your eternity is secure. But I'd like to pray as well for the church today. I want to pray for anybody here who feels like they've been on a, in a good place with God and they feel like they've stepped back a bit this year. Maybe they've gone through some stuff. If that's you, you don't have to raise your hand this morning, but I want to pray for you. Lord God, I want to pray for anybody that has in the past received this amazing gift of Jesus, but has felt like they've shelved the gift, felt like it hasn't gone quite well this year, felt a bit distant. I want to thank you, Lord God, that you are like the father of the prodigal son, that you run towards them with open arms. And you say, welcome back. You call them back into relationship with you. you. Call them back into the heart of you. That you say all is forgiven. Let's do this again. That you pick them up and dust them off and they'll go on this new journey with you. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray for the church as a whole. As we go into this period of Christmas, Father, I want to pray, Lord God, for every person that over this time would know your peace over Christmas. They would know who you are. That in a time when it can be great celebration, but there can be great heartache. I want to pray that you would come 
by your Holy Spirit and you would bless each person, that you would draw each person close to you in this time, that we'd have moments of being able to reflect on your goodness, Lord Jesus, that we'd be excited about the future that you have for each and every one of us. We thank you for 2023. We thank you for all you've done. But we look forward to 2024 and all that you will do. We thank you for this great hope in Jesus that has come to set us free and give us life. And I want to pray, Father, for anyone going through anything, that they would give it to you, Lord God, that perfect love casts out all fear. They would give you any fears and worries and concerns, and they would choose to run freely with you this morning, knowing that you've got it, that you've got every situation that you are King of kings and Lord of lords, you're in control of everything and they do not need to fear because you are with them. Thank you for Emmanuel, God with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.